Hey there, my name is Alex, I am the Silvermont, and in this video we're going to be talking about the potential of Sekiro DLC. Hopefully the thumbnail and title gave you the right impression, not that I've secretly obtained info about upcoming DLC. I don't have anything like that, this is all speculation. That said, there will be spoiler talk for the main game, so if you haven't beaten it and care about spoilers, well, stop watching now. Still here? Well... If we're talking Sekiro DLC, I think a safe bet would be something along the lines of Wave to Moe DLC expansion. Why is that? Well, it would follow the pattern established by prior games put out by the studio, for one thing. Back in 2011 when Dark Souls came out, many players, myself included, noticed that Artorius is mentioned time and again in the game, but he never showed up. You could get two, three versions of his sword, and in general he seemed like an important character. Lo and behold, a year or so later we had the Artorius of the Abyss DLC expansion. Skip ahead a few years and we get Dark Souls 2. Therein we had another character who was mentioned a lot in the base game, who seemed very important, but he never showed up. Uldia Andil in the Japanese version. So when Scholar of the First Sin was announced, it didn't take too much guesswork to figure out who it would be about. My top two guesses were Audia or Olenford. Although Audia was obviously a lot more important than Olenford, as I imagine a lot of you don't even remember who that is, for good reason, he was only mentioned like once or twice. But jump ahead to Sekiro, and we have a very important character who never makes an appearance in the game, as far as I'm aware. Tomoe. Kudo. Wolf's Lord is not the first divine heir, and we know before Kudo there was a divine heir known as Takeru. In a nutshell, as Wolf is to Kudo, Tomoe was to Takeru. Now we don't know exactly what happened to either Takeru or Tomoe, so far as I'm aware, but I may well have missed something, and yes I apologise for my horrible pronunciation, I can't help it. I'm writing this script after completing the game only once, and it's very early in the game's life cycle, so to speak. What I do know is that Takeru and Tomoe have graves, and it seems they visited the Fountainhead Palace, the Divine Realm, at least once, and they brought back with them the Everblossom Tree, which seems to be related to the dragon. Is that the dragon's missing left arm? Did Tomoe cut it off and turn it into a tree? I don't know. But the fact that Tomoe has a grave would imply she is dead, but it's not as if death and life are such simple matters in this game now, are they? So let's look at it a little bit more. We know that Tomoe was Genichiro's mentor. This can be assumed from his Way of Tomoe fight, where he starts using the heretical lightning, and also from the fact that Ishin flat out tells us that Tomoe was Genichiro's master. What's also bizarre is that Ishin speaks of his own battle with Tomoe, and how it was the closest he ever came to death. But he doesn't speak of her in past tense, as in he's referencing someone who is still alive. Is that a sloppy localization? Or is she still alive? Or is that just how Ishin speaks because he's a weird old man? Either way, it's a confirmation of her skill, if nothing else. Ishin is the sword saint after all, is that Kensei in Japanese? Something like that. And if you fought him, well you know his skill first hand. Emma, meanwhile, remarks that she would often see Genichiro training whilst glaring at the spiral head clouds. Why was he glaring? Because Tomoe is no longer there? Well, at any rate, I think Tomoe would be a good fit for a DLC. If she's dead, well, she can always come back to life, because Genichiro used the second mortal blade, the black Fushigiri, to bring back Ishin, after all. And when people are brought back from the underworld in such a fashion, they are brought back in their prime, so Tomoe would be at her strongest. We also have the potential for a bell that is going back in time to when she was alive. Now, if she is alive, maybe she is tied up with the second mortal blade that frankly seemed to come out of nowhere along with Ishin popping out of Genichiro. I suppose it makes sense because Genichiro was like I have failed so I'm going to get Grandad to do it for me but everything there felt a bit rushed and in need of fleshing out. That is what I would like the DLC to focus on 
explaining everything around that. I thought it was a little silly how the second Mortal Blade just conveniently appeared. So if they explain the process behind that, that'd be nice. And I think you can probably imagine how Tomoe would fight. Defeating her could net us either a combat art using lightning, or maybe a prosthetic that uses it. Maybe we could also obtain the second Mortal Blade in the DLC to allow us to do some weird jewel wielding, I don't know. Another option for the DLC would be more cliche and going into more sort of real history territory and involve Date Masamune. The real life Ashina clan were largely defeated by Masamune after a decisive battle, but I don't know how connected the Ashina clan in game are with the real one, as it seems to be largely fictitious. They have different clan emblems, they seem to have different people. I don't think there's much of a connection there. Either way you spin it, it would be hard to make a DLC that takes place after the ending without going into sequel territory, especially as the game has four endings. So I think it would have to be a DLC that takes place at some point before the end of the game, much like how it has been in many of their other titles. But what would you like to see in a DLC for Shadows Die Twice? Playing as Wolf? Playing as Genichiro? A prequel where you play as Ishin or Tomoe? Takeru? Sequel DLC? Let me know what you think down in the comments.